display settings and layout templates. Okay, so a common question people have is how do I adjust this for my brand? The key here is to go to this third tab, display settings, on the top right, it's a pencil icon. And here you can change the background image, you can remove the background image, you can change it by clicking replace image. If I remove the background image, then I can customize the color of the background here under custom palettes. I can either add the hex code or I can just change it. And you can see the color change as I change the red. Obviously, if you have a background image, then this color has no relevance because you're going to have the background image instead of this background color. Okay, the next thing is component color. When I click component color, this is the color of the buttons, the side buttons, the call to action at the bottom. That, that's impacted by this color. So if I change this to a green, then this is going to change to green in the button in real time, and you can see everything change to green. Okay? The last thing is the text color. And then here, let's say I want to change it to a blue, and I can change my text color to a blue, and you'll see that the text changes here to blue. Okay? And that covers the custom palettes. Um, the third thing, the, the next thing, I guess, is tint. Uh, if you have a background image that's not as, that doesn't have as much contrast with the text on a page, like in this case, that's not the case, but um, sometimes you, you will have a situation where the text color and the background are a little too close and you want to add more uh, brightness. So you can tweak the brightness here from the tint so that the text appears very clearly, okay? This would be no tint and this would be a high tint and then this would be somewhere in the middle. Of course, you can change the font type um, pretty easily. Let's say Montessara. There. Um, you can add a logo on the top left. You can remove a logo. Um, and then you can show progress bar, show real-time results. The, the next thing about changing layout and switching experience. So sometimes you might be in the middle of creating a calculator and realize that the experience is simple enough that you can use Outgrow's outcome quiz instead. So you just click switch experience and switch to outcome quiz and you'll be all set. Um, another thing you might uh, realize as you go along is that you might not be 100% satisfied with this specific layout. You might want to tweak the layout a certain way. So you just click change layout. I usually recommend clicking duplicate and change because you then will be able to save this version and compare it to the other version that you're trying to change to. Um, so that's kind of a, the best thing to do. You can also click change anyway if you really don't care at all about the current version. But I strongly recommend doing duplicate and change so you don't lose the existing version. I'm just going to click change anyway um, for now uh, so that you can see the layouts. So this was the layout that we just were on, which was the Chicago layout. You'll see it's a card for each question and it progresses down the page along the way. Now, I can choose different types of layouts for my um, to change it to. So I can use this type of layout where I have the questions on the left and the answer on the right. I can have this type of layout or this type of layout. You can kind of go through it, see the types of layouts, see what you like, and see which works best. If you have Logic Jump, then it tends to work better with Stockholm, Madrid, Venice, and Chicago. So I would most probably switch it to Stockholm. And I click switch to Stockholm and you'll see that the layout will automatically change for me. All the questions, everything will be retained with the change. So I don't have to worry too much about getting everything executed. I tried the new template. Now you can clearly see here that this red color that I just put on the background doesn't look good. So you know, you'll want to tweak that color um, there and then you probably want to remove that background image or try something else. So you, this needs a lot of work in terms of the colors. The colors don't fit based on what I put. Um, so this needs this needs a lot of work here on term, from terms of design, uh, in terms of getting the right uh, palettes. You know, or you can just use a predefined palette here. And this one looks a lot better, right? So you see how much can you save in real estate taxes now? You get started, goes to question one, goes to question two, three, or five, and you can see here the design is a lot more user friendly. Um, and that covers the display settings and the layout. The next thing is lead generation. Um, so this is really important because this is where you actually acquire the person's lead information. 
So here you'll see that there's an offer with a lead gen form. Where should we send your 20% coupon? My name is, and you can get in touch with me at. Okay. Um, this is a good lead gen form because it's only asking you for two fields and it's not on the results page. Um, you really want to try to stay away from having your lead generation form on the results page. You want to put it either on the welcome screen or right before the results. If lead gen is your number one priority, then put it on the welcome screen and limit it to two fields, full name and e business email or personal email, depending on if you're a consumer business or a B2B company. To access lead generation form, you'll see on the top right, right above this pencil display settings icon, there's this lead generation icon. So if I click on it, on the right, I can see where I want to put the lead generation form. If I want it to be a Facebook login or a text input type lead generation form, and then I can adjust the heading, I can adjust the full name, the email, I can ask for validation on the email, I can add other fields, like if I want to add phone number, I can add phone number, and things like that, right? If I don't want phone number, I can remove it, or I can not require it, if I don't want to make it a mandatory field. Um, and that's, that's the main thing for lead gen. So make sure that you try to limit it to, two fields is great, but definitely keep it, um, don't go beyond four. Uh, if you can. Social share. Okay. So, so do you remember on the hostel example, hotel versus hostel example, when you, when you look at each call to action for each result, so you have condition one has this call to action, condition two has this call to action, condition three has this call to action. You might want the call to action to be share on, share on social media. Under share on social media, when you click Facebook or Twitter, you have the share URL, which is usually just this link over here. When you click copy live calculator URL to clipboard, if I click, la click that, that's the link you probably want is your share URL. Uh, this is the public live link. Uh, by the way, when you click copy live calculator URL to clipboard, it's on the top right. Then you have the share widget title and the description of the share. And then you have the social share image. You can uh, add a different image based on the value that the person got. So if the person got a high value, like 1200 to 1600 condition three, you can then say, I want to put a different image than the other, the other conditions and maybe different share widget text and, and title. Uh, but that's how you adjust the social share um, that appears when someone clicks this Facebook or Twitter, when someone clicks these options on the result page. They, they're adjusted and controlled from the results setting on the top, bottom left, and then you go in to results here and you edit the call to actions. But there is another set of social share features that I want to make sure you understand the difference, difference between. So these, these ones are for the users who are sharing the calculator when they reach the results page. The other option is when you yourself are sharing the calculator as a regular share, where you copy this URL here and then paste it into Facebook. To adjust that social share setting, go to configure and within configure, click SEO. And then under SEO, you'll be able to see the preview of what, how it would look if this was linked, if you basically just pasted this link into Facebook. This is how it would populate. Hotel versus hotel savings calculator is the heading, subheading, and then image. If you don't like this image, this is the default background image that's appearing here. If you don't like this image, you can come in and add a featured image here and upload it. Select files to upload, or you can upload from, you know, link, web search, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. And so it's very important to understand the difference between those two options when it comes to so social sharing. Confirmation email. Okay. So again here, this is in the configure tab. When I click configure, there on the left, I can see email notifications. When I click email notifications, there are two types of emails. One is sent to the users who complete the form and one is to me, the admin. Who I want to know that someone completed the form. So I have to toggle this on for user notification and I can adjust the subject line and the message based on my specific, uh, the specific scores that the person got. 
So I use the R1 tag to denote the value they got. So I can also use their question tag. So you can say like, I noticed that you invest in Q1. So I can come here and say, I noticed that you invest in Q1. Because I know Q1 is going to be residential or commercial based on the, uh, because I know question one is what type of real estate you invest in. So if I just click Q1, you'll see that it shows Q1 like that. All right, or you can just type it directly. Uh, once you get used to it, you can type it directly. At the beginning, just click add the variable over here, and then you can add the variables. You can see I can add the full name field, the email field, their questions, I can add the result field, the actual value of the result. I can also add the result one text, the description text in the result. Um, everything can be added uh, right right here. So you can basically personalize the message that you send them based on their specific question inputs and result scores. And you can actually also do that within the subject line. You know, uh, congrats on your score of you know, R1. Right. And again, if you don't want to do R1, if you don't want to type R1, you can just click add variable, go down to result one, and we want to put the value. So I use R1, exclamation. Remember, after you toggle on, you have to publish the changes for it to actually go live. If I just toggle it on and never publish, this email will not trigger. It has to be, after I click on, I have to click publish. The same here for notification to self. I have to turn it on so it will notify me. I select who I wanted to notify, and then I can customize this email saying, okay, I want the name of the person, the email of the person. I also want the result score that this person got. So I click result score. I can go down, add result one. And now I have that information that's going to be sent, notif that's going to be a notification email sent as soon as every uh, person completes that lead gen form. Okay. The integration. So uh, the integration is also within this configure tab. I click integrations on the left. And then you'll see that I can access native, Zapier, webhooks, or custom variables. So there's a wide range of integrations I can access. The if I go under native and I want to integrate with HubSpot, click activate, I can see that these are the fields in Outgrow that I want to map to HubSpot. So if I want to map the UTM source from Outgrow to HubSpot, I click under HubSpot field, I find the source field, lead source, and I map the source fields to each other. If I want to map city from Outgrow to HubSpot so that I can uh, know which territory uh, and which salesperson is, should be assigned to the lead, then I map from City Outgrow to City HubSpot. It is possible that some of the Outgrow fields that you generate, like question values, aren't pre-existing fields in HubSpot. In that case, you need to create a custom field in HubSpot that's a string or text input field to accept the, very, the values from Outgrow to HubSpot. Um, and then you can also send the results course. So I can say result one, send it to HubSpot as Result one, if I need to find it here, result one. Perfect. So I map the field connection. I click test connection and I'm done with the integration. So it's actually really quick, really simple, and really fast to set up the integration. Um, and then everything will just flow right to HubSpot or to Marketo or Salesforce or whatever uh, marketing automation or CRM tool you're using. Okay, charts and graphs. So let's look, go back to the build tab and figure out how to work these charts and graphs. When I click onto the results page and I click settings on the top right, I'll see that there's an option to add a chart or a video or an image or a table. Let's click on chart. I click edit chart. I'll see there's all these um, variables. Now let's assume that we only want to add, we only have three columns. We don't really want this column and we only want one chart. We don't want one, uh, one bar graph. We don't want the second graph, the second row. So all I do is I, I click into any cell on this row and I just right click remove this row. And then I click on any cell in this column and I right click and I click remove column. And then I wanna figure out basic tasks, advanced tasks and average. Okay, now the basic tax is calculated in outgrows result six. Okay, you guys don't know that but basically just assume that R6, the formula in result 6 is basic tax. The formula in result 7 in outgrows is advanced tax. 
and the average is just the average of these two cells. So how do I incorporate these formulas into this table? The trick here is to click, is to write equals r underscore six. And the reason why you want to put an underscore is that you want it, you want it to be very clear to this table that don't search for column r in this table. Go to r6 in the outgrow builder, the same here. You want it to go to R7 in the outgrow builder, so you put an underscore. And then for the average field, now I'm directly referencing B2 and C2, these two cells. So in that case, I don't put an underscore. I just say, well, take equals B2 plus C2 over 2 and give me the average. And then it's going to populate this chart. I can adjust the x-axis, y-axis, chart title, etc. Um, but this kind of gives you a good sense of how this chart is going to work. Uh, the one thing here is that this doesn't look good because it's giving you a very precise value with many decimal places. So all you have to do is add int, and it's going to make it an integer or a full number, and you'll see that it becomes a proper number. And I can do the same thing here. I just put an int in parentheses around the whole thing, and I get it as a proper number. And that's all there is to it, right? Um, you can do this for any result value. I can quickly show you R6 and R7 to uh, give you a sense of how it works. So then I can click Update Chart, or I can just X out of it. And then when I go to R6, you know this is the formula in R6. So we go to Result on the bottom left, click on R6. That's the basic tax formula. R7 is the advanced tax formula. And those that's what's going to get incorporated into the chart, the first two values in the chart. So now, when it comes to using Excel uh, versus the Outgrow Formula Builder, how does that work? How do you navigate that? So I wanted to quickly highlight how to do that. So when you click on Edit, you'll see this is the Outgrow Formula Builder, and this is the formula here. I'm going to copy this and take it to the Use It to the Excel, which when you click on the top right, you see how it says Use Excel Base Table. If I click there, and I just paste this over here to show you how to translate the outgrow formula to this Excel. This formula says, if Q2 is less than two, then the true condition will be two Q2. If it's, if it's not, the false condition is two times Q2, okay? So let's translate that here into Excel lingo or syntax. If Q2, I have to put an underscore because this is the question valuable, the question variable in outgrow. If Q2 is less than two, then show me Q2. Otherwise, show me 2 times Q2, or I have the value be 2 times Q2. And then I divide it by 100 and times it by Q4. And that's all I need to do. So now I have the value. I could put this in any cell I want in the table. So if I, I put it now in B6, so I come here on the top right cell for result number, I just write B6 and I'm done. Alternatively, I could have pasted this in B10, this formula, and I would have just written B10 here. Uh, what's going to happen if I, when, once I click Apply Excel Formula is that the formula, the, the value that's in the cell here, B6, will, be pop, will populate um, the result at the end. And that's all. That's all there is to uh, applying Excel formulas. Thank you.